What do these ESPN layoffs mean for the Pac-12 conference, a potential TV deal for them, what that means for Big 12 schools leaving, and also an update on where San Diego State sits currently. That is coming up on today's Neighborhood Watch. I am your host, Josh Neighbors. This is part of Crystal Ball College Football, part of the 365 Sports Network. Please subscribe wherever you are and how you are watching the video or listening. Make sure you guys give the podcast itself five stars with how you're listening. Also follow us on Twitter at NWPod365. You all can find me at Josh Neighbors underscore for the show as well. All those places are where you can find us. We are a bit late today um, coming on the, doing this show. There is a reason for that. Um, you know, this is uh, life happens sometimes. I was going to record and then, uh, you know, life happens. My dad gave me a call. Let me know that my, my grandfather, his dad, uh, Jim Neighbors, had passed away. He had been dealing with some health issues, but had been pretty doing pretty well. And then, uh, you know, his, his lungs were filling up with blood, which, were, which obviously is an issue. And then they found out that he had a form of lung cancer. It's not the lung cancer that killed him. Uh, but it would have been a tough fight afterwards. He went peacefully in Roanoke, Virginia. My dad was able to be there with his brother um, and, and and his wife as well. So uh, then my grandmother, Mamie, as we call her, uh, was there. So my grandfather, uh, you know, I've just been thinking about him today. Very difficult after, afternoon, obviously. Um, you know, I just I say it because he is he is one of the main reasons I love sports. My dad taught me to love sports. Um, we would go, I mean, especially college football. Uh, I got to grow up going to Virginia Tech games because my grandparents had season tickets for 45 years. So at a young age, I got to go. Um, the things that I always remember from going to games with him, especially were things like saving the stadium cups. You don't leave those things in the ground, man. You take those home with you. And over time, they got nicer and nicer. And so you take those things home with you. You pop them in your dishwasher and you can use those things over and over and over again. I mean, not the healthiest thing for you, right? I know they said there's, you know, there's coding or whatever on that stuff, but he taught me to take those things home. He always would like to uh, would like to make a stiff drink at the end of the day in his faded stadium cup. So, I mean, you'd have a, a cup from, you know, Virginia Tech versus Georgia Tech uh, from 2001 that he'd still be drinking out of. And then eventually the, they had the cups that you'd turn where like the images would turn on them as well. Uh, so, I, <laughs> so I keep those cups too. Um, you know, baseball, I mean, he used to take my dad. They live in Southwest Virginia. They would they would take the YMCA bus to Cincinnati and they would go watch the Big Red Machine play, and um, that you know instilled kind of love in sports in my dad, and so my dad passed that on to me. And uh, you know he liked things like his iPad. He liked to sit there and watch CNBC every single day and see how his stocks were doing. He was a good old boy. He's from DC, but then he you know he lived in Southwest Virginia, ran an RC bottling plant for most of his life. He retired, spent a lot of time in Florida, loved to play bocce ball. Love to bike around, and um, I'm gonna miss my papa. Miss him a lot. So, um, whoever out there for you all was, you know, your papa or whoever it is that you know, um, uh, and still loving sports and you and your life, you know, just make sure you guys uh, make sure you give him a hug today, and, and you know, let him know that you love him because that stuff's really important. So, uh, I'm gonna miss my papa, and that's why the the show is a little bit late. And I'm sorry for the sappy beginning, but uh, this show is normally had at 1:30 each day, and that's the reason why it's not today, uh, just because we got that news. But um, yeah, he was able to uh, pass peacefully around family, and uh, he is he is the reason why you know uh, the neighbor's family had a hard upbringing. Man, his dad his dad bailed early on him, and um, you know he he pulled himself up by his bootstraps. A very great American story, and a kind of if you will, but good old Southern boy who loved his football, loved his baseball, loved his wife, loved his family, loved his grandkids, loved sports, and um, big reason why I love sports as much as I do is because of my grandfather, my papa. So I'm going to miss him a lot. Um, and yeah, just letting you all know, um, I just felt like I needed to say that today because obviously it's in the back of my brain, but today's a big day. Um, today is the first thing, you know, I thought we were talking about San Diego state today, but then obviously on Fridays, as, as Fridays do, we get news dumps, right? And so a pretty large news dump, um, pretty large news dump with, with some, some ESPN layoffs. And so I feel like that's a great place to start. I saw John Wilner made the point on Twitter that it would be weird if the Pac-12 were to announce a TV deal today, because I think there were some folks and we thought, well, can the Pac-12 throw a Hail Mary today and do a couple things? Can they announce a TV deal, announce a TV deal that includes San Diego State and kind of wrap it all into one and make it happen on one day? 
that does not appear to be the case. Um, you know, at least not the news that we've heard and definitely not going to be the case involving ESPN. I mean, we saw a heavy, heavy hitter lineup leave ESPN. We saw legends. And I say, I, I don't mean this, uh, you know, in a pejorative way. I mean, I mean this, you know, ab about as much as you can legends like a Susie Colbert, no longer going to be with ESPN. Todd McShay, no longer going to be with ESPN. Jeff Van Gundy, part of their NBA finals crew, no longer going to be with ESPN. I've seen other folks down the line as well who have been laid off by ESPN. But this follows a trend that, look, it would be hard for ESPN to announce any kind of deal here in quick succession when they're announcing all of these people are no longer going to be with the company. So the idea that hey, ESPN's out on this, right? At least for right now, it feels like they are. And I feel like it's, it's not coming anytime soon. Now, does that mean no deal is imminent? Sure. I mean, uh, it, it might not mean that, but I think a lot of folks have pushed back on the deal. And I think Kirk Scholes made some comments about it too. Hey, we've got some television partners out there that are announcing some, uh, you know, some potential television partners, let's say, that are announcing some things financially. And it might not make a lot of sense for them, you know, to announce a television deal right now. But, you know, that, that, that could be happening there. That being said, though, when you pair that up with the fact that Andrew Marshan's reporting, the ESPN, you know, and he told us, he said, never say never. But he told us, he told us in the lockdown Big 12 days, guys, that ESPN was out. And this news kind of seems like, look, we're not going to be announcing a TV deal here anytime soon if we're also announcing all of these cuts at the same time. So there is that. Once again, does not mean other people, you know, other, other things couldn't be out there. I'm recording this at 227 Central Time, so we could get something by the end of the day. I know West Coast Time is 1227, but at least from what I'm seeing, there's nothing on the front of, and this gets us now to San Diego State, like there's nothing there that signals, uh, you know, uh, nothing signals that they're going to be out of there. And Dennis Dodd wrote this today. The question was asked this week regarding a turning point in conference realignment involving the Pac-12. San Diego State, and college athletics. What happens on Friday? On June 30th, the exit fee for the Aztecs to leave the Mountain West doubles from $17 million to $34 million. The technical deadline is 11 uh, p, uh, p.m. PT. That doesn't exactly uncomplicate the picture. San Diego State on June 13th wrote a letter to the Mountain West Conference stating it ultimately intends – to leave the conference, attempting to clarify through language in the letter that it was not yet submitting an official notice of withdrawal. As part of that letter, SDSU asked for a one-month extension on its deadline before the exit fee doubles so it could submit its official notice after June 30th and still only be on the hook for $17 million. Now, uh, Mountain West Commissioner Gloria Navarez went out of her way in the subsequent correspondence to not only deny the extension request, but to confirm that the conference accepted SDSU's initial, thought to be, deftly worded letter as its official notice of withdrawal, right? So you have these two entities uh, pitting themselves against each other with this right here. San Diego State says, hey, we have not told you we are officially leaving. We just plan on leaving. And then you have the Mountain West saying, we take this as you are officially leaving. So those two entities at odds right there. Obviously, the Mountain West is not in any way, shape, or form going to allow this thing to be an easy, clean break. And folks, can we blame them? I don't think we can at all. Um, so this also says SDSU requesting an extension in its initial letter likely means it was, to uh, it was told a Pac-12 media rights deal is probably another month away. I agree with that. Ideally, it wants to make sure that deal is ratified before it submits an official notice of withdrawal. That also makes sense because if you withdraw, if you withdraw from the league <coughs> and the deal doesn't happen, you are a, uh, what is the term? Uh, as like a nation without a, whatever the term is, right? Like, you know, you're, you're, you're without a musical chair, if you will, right? Musical chairs, you are the one left out the dry in that situation. So it makes a lot of sense why you'd want some clarity on that. Now, asking for the extension, I just don't understand why the Mountain West would give it to them. I have yet to see a good explanation of why the Mountain West 
should give them an extension on this. What does it do? Because of the Mountain West, you just stand to make more money. Your negotiating point just it goes because the, the next thing is, all right, $34 million. Like, and here's the thing. Momentum is key. San Diego State wants to capitalize right now off their positive momentum. And um, they want to do it, I think, in a pretty timely fashion here because they know – they know that things are changing and they know they want to join the Pac-12 and they want to get in there kind of as fast as possible. Um, also, you have in this, this piece, uh, it says, however, the Aztecs can't afford not to leave the Mountain West Conference considering the long-term trajectory of the university. Despite that, athletic director J.D. Wicker has publicly acknowledged the school cannot afford a doubled exit fee of $34 million. Does San Diego State have any leverage to get the Mountain West to agree to one month extension? Doesn't look like it. Technically, they're out of the conference right now, one source said within the league. Now, I don't know if that's true. I think there, there would be a big legal fight over this, but I think, I think the conference says no, that fee doubles, and now we're negotiating from 34. John Willner and I talked about this. John Kurtz and I talked about this. The idea that, hey, this is now doubled, not because of the university's incompetence, but because of the Pac-12's inability to get a television deal on the table ready to sign for them. And so while it's not San Diego State's fault directly, look like, and here's the thing, it's kind of where the Big 12 comes in. You, you, a lot of folks out there might say, well, join the Big 12, go to the Big 12. That makes a lot of sense. We talk with Mark Ziegler too, and folks, this is why it's important I do all these interviews, Right. We've got, you know, John Kurtz and I cover the Big 12, kind of that perspective. John Wilner covers the Pac-12, that perspective. Mark Ziegler covers San Diego State, and I encourage you all to go back and watch the interview now from a couple weeks ago. We have that perspective. We're hitting it from all those angles. And the way Mark presented it, which makes a lot of sense, is that San Diego State does not want all of their athletics and the, you know, the non-revenue ones and some of the lower revenue ones, you know, ba basketball makes revenue and stuff like that, but traveling across the country because – it is inherently more expensive when they do so. So that makes a lot of sense. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I understand that. I, I understand why they would not want all of those school, all of those teams and schools and whatnot traveling all over the place. It just financially for them probably doesn't make a ton of sense. So that makes sense why they're resistant to it. And there's no reporting saying that they'll join in the Big 12. But if we're hearing out there, if, if you know, if J.D. Wicker is saying, look, we can't afford that, you know, I'm not saying they can't conjure up 20 to 25 million, which I think would probably be the agreement, right? If you're the if you're Mountain West, why are you taking anything less than 17? If the price is 17 and it goes, you know, in the words of Fat Joe, I believe, uh, yesterday's price is not today's price, uh, as he said it multiple times. That's the facts here. Yesterday's price, uh, or you know, in this case, today's price. Not tomorrow's price. Tomorrow's price doubles. That's where I'm starting from the Mountain West Conference because San Diego State right now is making you money. Why would you let them off the hook for anything less? Now, this is where we're back to the Big 12. There have not been conversations between San Diego State and the Big 12 in weeks, sources told CBS Sports. The Big 12 continues to prioritize Colorado and perhaps UConn with eyes on the other four corner schools. So... It sounds like with what Dennis is saying, and it sounds like I think it's pretty easy to say here, the Big 12, they want to go out west, but why wouldn't you prioritize Colorado? Because Colorado right now in the kind of, if the Big 12 is locking arms, Colorado doesn't want to kind of be in beside everybody. They're like, all right, we're not really sure if we're into all this all the way in. And so it makes a lot of sense they would, they would focus there. Maybe they can get San Diego State for a discount down the line, but San Diego State, man, it just makes – so much sense for them to be joining. Uh, you know, it makes so much sense for them to join the Pac-12. But it seems like for the Pac-12, you know, this is something big and positive they can score here. It's about to get a lot more challenging. It's about to get a lot more challenging. And so Dennis says, where are we in the latest realignment flashpoint? The order of events hasn't changed. Nothing happens in the realignment big picture until the Pac-12 gets a new deal. As of July 1, there will be less than a year left in the current Pac-12 deal with ESPN and Fox. Whether the Pac-12 stays in its current configuration seems to hinge on something CBS Sports pointed out long ago. The issue may be more about visibility than revenue. So I feel like we pocketed that visibility conversation for a while now. We even talked about visibility. We talked a lot about money and dollars and cents. But to me, at a, at a certain point, like, the Pac-12 was coming from a position where the visibility is low with the Pac-12 network. 
So it's even more challenging to try to get more visibility um, when we're trying, you know, when we consider where they're coming from, the fact that it's getting each and every day, the amount of leverage they have gets lesser and lesser. So if you're chasing visibility and not chasing dollars, I know they want to chase both, but it gets more challenging for them each and every day as time goes by. He goes on to say, that's why the likes of Colorado, Arizona, and Arizona State are considering their options. The vast majority of the Pac-12 is waiting for the exact details of the new media rights deal before acting. Though some have more options than others, given the Big Ten does not appear keen on expanding anytime soon again. After the new Pac-12 deal may come expansion. The new media partners could uh, could only offer a fixed uh, fixed figure only for the league's 10 teams. If there's less of a pie to go around, expansion excuse me, may be squashed altogether. Is San Diego State worth a full share of any Power 5 conference at this point? Wouldn't it settle for half a share in the Pac-12, say, $15 million per year just to get in the big time? I think they would. It still looks like the Pac-12 or bust for San Diego State, which begs the begs further question, uh, considering current events, what does bust look like? At best, contentious negotiations are on the horizon over SDSU's exit. At worst, the two parties could end up in court. Um, I, I would go the contentious negotiations route. That feels like where this is trending for San Diego State because right now, folks, that fee's about double. I think it's another challenge that the Pac-12 could not get over. I'm not going to go out there and say that this is a nail in the coffin for them by any stretch of the imagination. What I am saying for them is this is one more hurdle they could not cross in time. They could not cross in time. Um, it sucks for them. It sucks for San Diego State fans. It sucks the university. It's got plenty of momentum and I think should be in the Power Five at this point. They're just not able to get the job done there. All right, that will do it for this week's shows. I appreciate you all letting me have that time at the beginning of the show. You all wanted to skip over that too. I understand that. Just get the realignment talk. Follow us on Twitter at NWPod365. You all can find me at Josh Neighbors underscore. Have a safe and awesome 4th of July weekend. Hope you all have a good time. Hope you all stay safe as well. We'll talk to you all on Monday.